Hey, Heartland, Steve Carter here, and welcome to Holy Week. Today is Palm Sunday, and it's also my son Emerson's birthday. I don't know about you, but um, today is um, a day where my hopes for celebrating my son, my expectations for what his 12th birthday was going to be, um, isn't coming to, to fulfillment. Uh, my wife and I, we had some big plans a month ago to kind of celebrate him and kind of begin this rites of passage as he prepares to become a teenager. And today, because of COVID-19, it looks a lot different. I know many of you understand this. Maybe you have student athletes in your house and their seasons were canceled. Or maybe you have seniors in your home and their kind of graduation got canceled. Maybe you have a birthday or an anniversary or you had a spring break trip and it got canceled. You had these desires, you had these hopes, you had these expectations that ended up being far off from reality due to COVID-19. And friends, um, this is very similar to the backdrop that the Hebrew people are facing. See, they, they've been living in occupation. And when you search the Old Testament, the Hebrew scriptures, you begin to discover that there were two messianic expectations. There were two beliefs of how the, the Messiah would come into the earth and come into the world. And one that they held on to was a Messiah that would come in power and liberate them from their suffering. And then there was this other messianic expectation, one that was found in Zechariah chapter nine. It, it didn't have a whole bunch of fanfare. It wasn't something that people held on to. And really, I imagine that most of the people just kind of pushed it away. And here's why. See in Zechariah chapter nine, verse nine, it says, Rejoice greatly, daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you righteous and victorious. Now, everyone can get behind that. Like, we got a king that's coming. And he's righteous, which literally is kind of this fulfillment of justice and peace and integrity. And he's victorious. He's going to bring us victory. But it's the next line. The next line where the Hebrew people have been like, wait, 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 what? Because it says he's coming righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey. And not just on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Now, the Hebrew people were like, wait, 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 wait. When we see battles happen, we see chariots and we see horses and we see armed kind of warriors getting ready to battle. That's our expectation. You're telling me that our king is coming lowly on a donkey and not just on a donkey, but on a colt, the foal of a donkey, a donkey that is nursing. That is what's going to bring us victory. Come on, come on, come on. And so Jesus for three years has been teaching, healing, performing miracles after miracles, offering up new interpretations of the text. He's sitting with sinners and bringing and inviting tax collectors to be his Talmudim, his disciples. He's welcoming women. I mean, there's something about this rabbi that is radically different. And after three years of public ministry, you know what he begins to do? Make his way towards Jerusalem. In Zechariah chapter 9, becomes the backdrop because in Matthew 21, Jesus says these words. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go to the village ahead of you and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, see your king comes to you gentle and riding on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. 
a very large crowd spread their cloaks. Because you remember in Zechariah chapter 9, it's like, sing and rejoice Zion and Jerusalem. And this is what the people began to do. While others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road, the crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. And Hosanna literally means like, please save. I mean, this is a desperate cry of people who are being held in a place of occupation and suffering and struggle. And they just keep screaming and rejoicing and singing. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, please save in the highest heaven. And when Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, who is this? And the crowds answered, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. So here's what I need you to see. Jesus enters into Jerusalem from the east on a donkey, and not just any donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. And he's literally bringing Zechariah 9 to life. But Jesus isn't the only person who's entering in to Jerusalem. See, on the west side, somebody else was coming into town. And this man was the governor. This man worked for the empire. This man's name was Pontius Pilate. And he didn't come on a horse. He came representing Rome. He came in power. He came on a horse. He came with armed guards. He came representing the power structure of the day. And you got to understand that the people know because any time there was a Jewish festival, Rome brought their governor, Pontius Pilate, to ensure that there wasn't a rebellion, there wasn't a revolt, there was no revolution at hand. But these people singing, Hosanna, 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 please, God, save us. And so on the east, you have a donkey. And on the west you begin to have Rome showing up in power. It's fascinating because this is the battle. And all in the middle are the people, just like you and me, with our expectations on who Jesus is supposed to be for me today, for our world today. And I place expectations on them. I place expectations just like those people who were screaming Hosanna, who had cut branches and had laid them down. What they were expecting was a battle. And Jesus absolutely obliterates their expectations. See, this was power versus peace. This was Rome versus a rabbi. And this is what it means for us to be honest about the expectations that we have put and placed on what our Messiah needs to be for me and for us versus being expectant that Jesus is up to something, that Jesus wants to do a new thing in us, and that even a lowly donkey can literally bring victory and righteousness. But these people in the center, these people who have been screaming out Hosanna, these people who had like laying out branches, they couldn't see it. All they could see was their expectations. All they could feel was what they were holding on to. And so what happens is a few days later, those same people who were screaming, please save, are now screaming, crucify him. Crucify him. Crucify him. What about you? What happens inside you when Jesus does not meet your expectations? What happens within you when Jesus' way of life and doing things is far off from your hopes and your desires? One great leader once said that pain and frustration 
is the gap and distance between expectation and reality. However big that gap is, that's how big our angst and frustration and struggle is. And Holy Week is the invitation to surrender those expectations and yet choose to be expecting that Jesus is up to something in us, with us, for us, through us. And so Heartland, what would it look like right now as we begin to kind of have a song that will be sung over us just to be a really honest and human with our expectations. And maybe you just need to take out a journal as the song is sung and you just need to write those kind of words down and say, save me from my expectations that I've placed unfairly on you and let me have the eyes and the ears to see and hear what you are up to. If we can be an expectant people, Heartland, Holy Week will be something like we've never experienced before. I love you. Grace and peace. I'll see you tomorrow. I see the King of glory coming on the clouds with fire. The whole ashes, the whole ashes. Yeah. I see. Washing over all I see, the people see, the people see. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in my highest. Hosanna, Hosanna. Rising up to take their place, the selfless faith, the selfless faith. I see a near revival, stirring as we pray and see. We're all Show me